The Gorinch is a massive seamount, a quite spectacular structure, very, very special from the biodiversity point of view. The science that is being done in this expedition serves a concrete purpose of increasing the conservation value around protecting all this biodiversity that, that we are assessing here. This expedition to Gorinch is an example of what can be done to give ocean conservation scale and to give it impact. We are risking losing millions of species in the next decades. We need to speed up ocean conservation and we need to do it now. Gorinch is an underwater mountain, is a tectonic sea mount, and uh, it's the tallest mountain in Western Europe. It's in the crossroads of uh, ocean currents from the north, from the Mediterranean, from the Azores, from the south, which creates this very complex oceanographic and structural area of which the biodiversity then benefits. This is an interesting area in terms of biogeography. It's a unique combination of species that you don't find in other areas. What is new in this expedition is this method of systematically going to map the distribution in many places. Because of this extensive sampling, uh, we find other species that have not been recorded here, and um, there are many species that we have not even identified yet. The teams are working to extract as many information as possible from this amazing area which is still so unknown. The divers do, do a number of assessments uh, on quadrats, quantifying the uh, elements of biodiversity. We are also collecting, for instance, water samples that allow us to study the environmental DNA, which is a tool that we have today to know which species are here even if we don't find them, if we, even if we don't see them. And we are using cameras, both in the bottom and at the surface, that haven't been used before. And this will give us an idea of what can be found without the presence of human. These are the landers that we've been using to um, sample the Gorinj area. So we put these down. We've got two cameras here and two lights here. And we attach bait poles here to attract uh, animals to our landers so that way we can get a good view. These two cameras are angled a little bit inward so we get something called stereo video and we run it through uh, a software program that allows us to measure fish down to the millimeter without ever touching them which is really cool. expedition. I'm coordinating the biodiversity surveys that are conducted by the scuba divers. Our ob main objective is to map the distribution and the abundance of the biodiversity, all the species that are living next to the rocks of this seamount. The bottom here in the area where the scuba divers can, can go uh, is covered by macroalgal forests. The marine forest can be formed of macroalgae and animals like corals, sponges, species that create 3D structures. And these 3D structures create habitat, refuge for other species to live inside, hide, feed inside the marine forest. With video surveys, you only see large species. And uh, the scuba divers, they actually can collect uh, samples from the fine areas and then all the species are sorted and identified under the microscope and then we find many species that you couldn't see in the videos. Specimens that we think are different from all the others we've collected. We're going to have to continue to work at home to do DNA analysis and also more in-depth morphological analysis. But here, based on just on their external external morphology, we've collected 500 substance samples. There's been plenty of studies in the Gorin, but most have been focused on bigger animals. So this is the first time that macrophon from 250 micrometers to 2 millimeters that is being sampled systematically. Okay. 
So the chance is that we find new things for Berlin and maybe even new things for science because Berlin is this, this special place in the Atlantic. Now we're really just touching the surface. <laughs> but even the, the, the surface, I'm, I'm sure it's going to reveal some, some interesting patterns. The bottom cover of the of the communities is is very pristine in terms of composition and is very good in terms of abundance. And we're very surprised to not find here the the most uh, aggressive invasive species that you find in the Azores and Madeira in Portugal, because we are in the middle. When the benthic community is so rich uh, and so impressive, uh, you'd expect the whole ecosystem to be healthy, and 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 we we seem to be missing one part of the ecosystem, which is the top predators, the big fish. We would expect a seamount so far away from uh, mainland to be thriving with predators, in particular sharks. And we have almost seen any shark on this expedition, which is a clear result that this area is also heavily fished. And so the f European fishing fleets are, on the, in general, on the uh, North Atlantic Ocean, putting uh, miles and miles of lines in the water that have uh, thousands and thousands of hooks each. And those which were initially directly to billfish and to, sh and to tuna, now are mostly catching sharks. And in some of these areas, mostly um, juvenile sharks. So before they even get the chance to grow, to reproductive uh, age. And so this is a very worrisome uh, result. And um, it will also give uh, elements for the governments to make decisions about how to protect these areas and remove those threats from uh, um, areas such as this one. We are the authority to, the, to nature conservation, but we are not alone. We have to work with all the other authorities that have a role in the management of these areas. We have uh, defined the most important uh, ecological values. We also study the most expected uh, threats on the biodiversity. We hope that contribute to uh, a better definition of conservation measures. I think that uh, marine protected areas are a great tool not only to preserve our ecosystems but also make these ecosystems and the planet more resilient to climate change. We are seeing some signs of stress in some of the communities derived potentially of warmer temperatures of the water that we know are affecting some organisms such as corals. So one of the goals of the expedition is also to study the corals that exist here on this seamount and also to understand how the impacts of climate change can affect communities in areas such as these. There is this big forest of brown algae that are very important to structure the whole community. And so we are looking in detail about all the animals and plants that are associated with such forests. If we have a, a thriving, a healthy environment, these communities are also more resistant and resilient to the impacts of threats such as climate change. Populations that live here are very rich in terms of evolutionary potential. Most of the gene pool of the species is on seamounts rather than the mainland. If the population of the seamounts would disappear, the species would not go extinct, but the, most of the evolutionary potential of the species would go extinct because the ancient populations have a lot more conservation potential. These days we talk a lot about restoration. Well, one population disappears, but we plant it somewhere else. This is not possible. Restoration is not an alternative to conservation. If we are uh, to conserve biodiversity, we should focus on the areas that are still pristine. We are not progressing fast enough in response of the degradation that we have imposed in the ocean. And so we have a big responsibility, I believe, to tip the balance Marine protected areas are the best tool to do that. When you protect the ocean, the good news is that the ocean responds. <laughs>